Hello and welcome to the Jeff Finch Experiment. I am here with Nick Lewis. Again. Again. Um, if you guys are sick of listening to me talk to Nick, you know, we could that could use some volunteers. Anybody want to come over, hang out, or, you know, I do plan on getting another microphone soon, hopefully within the next couple of weeks. Um, next time I get some sort of bonus or any extra thing from work, I will be buying another microphone. Or if you would like to donate a larger table. That would be nice. Um, right. I, what I need to do is just spread this thing out. Like for those that never table, <laughs> like for those who've never been to my place, like basically, you know, I do this in my basement. I have kind of a man cave down here, and it's it's a good sized room, but it's like it's an L shaped room, and there's like this little booth area on like the lower part of the L, I guess you could say. Um, and there's like a little table. I have a TV, and I have all my recording shit set up here. And for right now, for two people, it's not so bad, but it is a little cramped. If I fit a third person in here, it would be very cramped. So I want to branch out to the rest of the room. But, you know, I don't know how well it would work. Plus, it's nice in the corner here because I have a couple of plugs in the wall and everything's, like, nice and close and local and all that. So, anyway, um, yeah, so anybody else wants to join, please get a hold of me on the Facebook group, jefffinchexperiment.com. Okay, that's not really a website, but, you know. Also, check me out on YouTube, the Jeff Finch Experiment. So, anyway, how you doing today, Nick? All right. Cool. Hey, um, so, you know, I was reading some articles and stuff recently and i just found out that the rift tracks folks originally of mystery science theater 3000 fame um they recently announced that they're going to bring back mystery science theater 3000 i guess it's going to be on netflix um i don't I, I honestly don't know what to think about it. Like, I, I'm kind of pumped about it because the show is good. Like, I wasn't, like, hardcore into the show. Um, but I, I kind of got into them the last few years because they, they do this thing called Riff Tracks. And uh, Nick Nick knows about it. Basically, you go to their website, and what they do is they, they riff on, like, like modern-day movies. Um, you know, classic movies from the last 30 or 40 years. Not just, like, the silly, like, quote... Obscure movies. Yeah, like D movies. From Mr. Science Theater 3000. Right, like, you know, Santa Claus conquers mars or one of those really the 50 foot woman yeah exactly and uh but now like you know the rift tracks thing is cool because like you go to their website and you can actually just download the audio from the you know the, by audio i mean like their jokes and then you just you download it onto like your phone or whatever you plug it into a stereo you put the headphones on whatever and then you you actually buy just the movie or rent the movie yourself and in that way they're not selling you the movie they're just selling you the track that's how they get around like the licensing fees and stuff but like they do like star wars and Indiana Jones and Harry Potter and Jurassic Park and Pretty much Matrix. sacred. Yeah, well, those are kind of sacred. <laughs> Unless that was your joke. But anyway, um, some of them are really great. And uh, Ooh, Nick and I... Well, you can imagine if they did The Passion of the Christ or something like that. Oh my god. Oh, oh man. Oh. <laughs> A riff tracks of Passion of the Christ. <laughs> dude, you know what? You know what, dude? We should watch that movie and rip it ourselves. I don't want to go to hell, dude. <laughs> so yeah, what do you think um, about them bringing back MST3K? As long as it doesn't suck, if it, but if it's as good as uh, the Rift Tracks have been, I said bring it on. I think that'd be really cool. Dude, that's no joke. Like, it's a new you know, generation of crappy movies to make fun of, even. Yeah, like, you know, the old MST3K, you know, that show, Mystery Science 3, Mystery Science Theater 3000, for those who've never seen it or heard of it, basically, um, you know, it was based around, it was kind of a futuristic show it was real low budget um basically it was a man who's like a scientist who lives on a spaceship out in the middle of space has these couple of robots that he hangs out with and like i don't know the like the reason but basically they sit around and they watch old obscure movies but these robots if you look at them whenever you're years later after you watch them and you look at these robots you can tell what they're made out of it's like the one's made out of a gumball machine. The other one's part of a vacuum cleaner. Yeah, like covered in tin foil and like <laughs> like it's very low budget. Yeah, but the three the three guys who played the parts, like the scientist and the two robots, are hilarious. And they what they do is they riff the movies. And by riff, I mean like you know they literally sit and watch the movie. And as the movie's going on, and you you watch the movie with them, you know you're watching it and you're getting into it or whatever the plot and and whatever. And they just make fun of it. They crack jokes. They talk crap on whatever the people are saying or how they look or their characters' names or the stuff that happens it, it's fantastic it's it, most episodes are very good there are some lame ones um but it's good and then there was also a mystery science three mystery science theater 3000 movie that came out do you ever see that no but i hear it's, it's very rare and if you do find it it's really expensive it used to be rare it's not rare anymore it's i think not? it might be on netflix now yeah but isn't it just one movie it's just one movie it's just it's literally called mystery one science e one episode really. yes yeah well they watch one movie in it 
Um, I cannot think of the name of the movie though, but it's pretty funny. Like the the movie they watch, it's I mean, it takes itself seriously. It's a science fiction movie from the late fifties. Um, the only actor in the movie that I recognized was uh, one guy. I don't know his real name, but he played the professor on Gilligan's Island. He's in the movie. <laughs> yeah, the one who couldn't repair the ship but could make. Uh, he could make a radio out of coconuts. coconuts. <laughs> that'd, be exactly. the, that'd be the kind of thing that they would riff. That is exactly what they riff. Well, if like, he's so smart, how come he can't? Fix I'm pretty it? sure every time he's on screen in this movie, they make a coconut crack. Like there's one where he's driving a car and they're like, they "Wow, this car's coconut. yeah, really <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, this car is really nice for being made out of coconuts. You know, like stuff like that. It's really good. Um, but they they have their own company now called Riff Tracks, as I had mentioned. And basically, you for a couple dollars, you buy and download the audio. Like it's literally like three bucks. And if you Especially like me, I, I collect DVDs. I have a pretty extensive DVD collection. I don't know, maybe well over a hundred, I'd say. And uh, you know, Child's Play. A lot of the movies I have, they uh, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, like one called one uh, one gem called Bong Water. Yeah, Jack Black stars in that movie. By the way. <laughs> It's horrible. It's Water. like early two thousands. It was like one of those one dollar movies at the Dollar Tree that my wife got. Mulan two. My wife is a big fan of Mulan. Nick is, oh, just so you guys can see, or you can't see, but Nick is like now, eyes. now scouring my DVD collection, which is sitting right next to me. Oh, more like scouring. Scouring? What did I say? No, that's what I mean. It's like, it's like, oh God, that one. But he does have some good ones in there, or at least ones I like. I've got some great movies. Of course you got Wayne's World 1 and 2. Of course. Dumb and Dumber. Yes. The, the Big Lebowski. Yeah, yes. The Princess Bride. Excellent I love movie. It. Willow. Uh, all of the Kevin Smith, mo- well, the original Kevin Smith movies, uh, Clerks, you know, Mall Rats. We're getting, we're, getting, we're uh, diver- uh, digressing. We're going back to uh, movies. We're going to try to avoid that. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. We talked one. about avoiding movies on this podcast because the last podcast we did, we talked almost exclusively video games and movies. Yeah, we almost uh, got into NC seventeen material. But that kind of rolls in with the MST three K though, like uh, you know, in the Rift Tracks thing, like no, you know, it's your fault. We got it onto this track. It is. It's totally my fault. But you know what? It's my fucking podcast. I could talk about what I want. You I could not talk about what I can't. <laughs> <I'm the only laughs> you you might as well be the co-host at this point. No, I'll have more guests. I've got a few friends who want to do it, and they just haven't made the time yet because I'm kind of limited. You know, I have a very busy job job and i work far from home and i have a young young child and it makes it tough and wah, wah, wah. <laughs> most of my friends are pretty my similar situation i am so goddamn important my name wah, is nick wah, lewis wah, wah. i have nothing better to do than talking to a microphone at 1 a.m at jeff's house that's fucking right and that's why we get along so well <laughs> I'm sorry, I lied. It is now two eighteen AM. Anyway. <laughs> I was gonna say no. I don't oh oh. No, I really don't I really don't like him. <laughs> Who, me? No, you were saying that to me. Oh, no, I like you, Nick. You're alright. I wouldn't invite you over if I didn't like you. Well, that's okay, as long as the rest of your family likes me. They do all like you. I don't get it, but yes. you know, it is what it is. <laughs> so anyway, um one thing I, I uh I thought about today, I saw some commercials for it recently, I thought about it today, and I thought about you, because I knew you were coming over today to talk, and I thought, you know, I thought maybe you could get into it. We talked, uh, the last time you came over, we talked a little bit about, like, classic, uh, like, Nickelodeon cartoons and shows. How about classic MTV? Did you ever watch any, uh, like, early 90s MTV? Not just music videos, but, like, uh, like the Beavis and Buttheads, Eon Flux, the Max, the Head. I think most of that, I pretty much started watching more of the MTV towards... Around like the turn of uh, the millennium. So you watched? Like, did you watch TRL? Yeah, uh, total, total request. Total request live. live. Yeah, that was uh, the that show. Game. TRL took a lot of crap, but it was actually a pretty good show when Carson Daly originally so. was on it. Yeah, like in ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. Bum bum song was on number one for. Oh Monday. yeah, Tom Green. Yeah, and then he retired it. Right. Thank God. Like he literally came on the show and retired the video. I remember that. I remember. Or what about whenever they would have the musical guests coming in or whatever, and they had. Uh, remember there was one they had. Rage Against the Machine playing Gorilla Radio live from the studio. Oh, really? The Times Square studio that they yeah. were at. I didn't see or that. One. They had. Uh... I probably did see it, but like, because seriously, my sister and I would come home from school, and when we got home, that show came on. I think it came on at like four p.m. Yeah, or three to four, something maybe like three thirty to four thirty or something. It was a one-hour show, and you know we had a long bus ride home. Yeah, three thirty to four, and I, yeah, yeah, it was a full hour. But anyway, um, yeah, we watched it religiously. And uh, so I probably did see the Rage Against the Machine. It just doesn't stick out in my mind. Um, the reason I brought it up, though, I don't know if you know this, uh, the the cable channel VH1 Is Carson Classic. Daly and Tara Reid getting back together? No, but Good. that would be freaking awesome. How? I don't know. Um, oh, dude, Tara Reid. All I can think about is that pepperoni titty. You know what I'm talking about? That wasn't her. Yeah, it was. No, it wasn't. Yeah, 
she had a uh, she had a mal- uh, wardrobe malfunction. Like oh, probably it's been a while now, five, six, seven oh, wait, years. No, you know, I'm thinking of American Beauty. And it was the other chick. American Beauty, yeah. the, the Grateful Dead album. No, no the movie, American the Kevin Spacey Beauty. movie. That's a good movie, by the way. I like that movie. Kevin Spacey. M- Mira Sorvino yeah. was the young blonde girl in that. Yeah. Anyway, no, not Mira Sorvino. What the fuck am I thinking? Um. I can't think. She was an American Pie. That's a, just, just think her word. Look it up. She has a weird... Her name is like Mira or Mina or Mila or something. Not Mila Kunis, but I can't remember. Mila Jovovich? No, I don't I know. Wish. Mila Jovovich? <laughs> At one time, she was... Re- you know, she looked really great in uh, GoldenEye. James Bond, GoldenEye. She was one of the bad people in that. She was one of the bad guys. No, she wasn't. Yes, she was. No, she wasn't. Mila Jovovich. No! She was not in GoldenEye. Who was the... Who was Sam Jansen. She was one of the next men. Fam Jensen, you're right. She was. Uh, she played the redhead in X Men. Yeah. yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I don't know why I was thinking Jovovich. They have those like polarizing eyes. Scene Bean was in Golden Eye too. Sean Bean. I always call him Scene Bean. It, I, it's it kills me that his that name a, doesn't rhyme. Is that a whiskey? <laughs> Scene Bean. I think. Well, I think they have a montage or whatever on YouTube of many deaths of Sean Bean because he pretty <laughs> he much dies died. in everything. He's like Leonardo DiCaprio. Pretty yeah. Much. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Of course not. You know that. You really should. It's TV. It's fantastic TV. It's TV. And it's fantastic fantasy. He's in the first season of that, and uh, spoiler alert, he, he I dies. Take he make, <laughs> I take it he doesn't make it to the I just second. won't tell you when he dies. Um, the reason I brought up MTV a few minutes ago, VH1 Classic is turning, is changing its format to MTV Classic starting Monday, August 1st. And there's going to be, I guess, from what I gather, it's going to be early 90s MTV. They're going to show music videos. They're Headbangers gonna sh- Ball. Headbangers Ball. Uh, Alternative Nation, I think, is going to be one of the shows. Um, but they're also going to show the really great cutting-edge TV shows of the time, mostly animation. Uh, the Beavis and Buttheads, uh, Daria, which was fantastic. Da, 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 da. La, 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 la. And then you always stick your hand out because she misses the volleyball, volleyball. on purpose. Classic. Mr. O'Neill. Mr. O'Neill. He was teacher. His, his eye was always twice. Oh, that's right, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I forgot about him. Yeah. I haven't watched Daria, obviously, in a very long time. But, uh, you know, the MTV, you know, people give that channel a lot of crap. And obviously, everybody wants to talk about 80s MTV, like when it was all music videos. And yeah, I understand that, you know, because that's what made the station. And MTV was so detrimental to the music industry in the late 80s and early 90s. I mean, MTV literally made a lot of bands. They made Nirvana. Nirvana was one of the biggest bands in the world. They probably wouldn't have made it as big as they were without MTV. They probably never would have gotten out of Seattle. I wouldn't say that. Because, oh, like, it's hard to say because, like, there was so much great music coming out of Seattle at the same time with the grunge movement. Um, and you know, Nirvana is probably one of the lesser musically talented bands of those. I mean, sound, when you think about it, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, those are the big bands and those, they have legendary guitar players, legendary singers. Nirvana doesn't have that. Now I do think Kurt's legendary and I think his songwriting is legendary and obviously he touched a lot of nerves and Kurt Cobain is like my all time favorite musician. I was a huge fan of Kurt. Uh, when it I was has a kid. to do with the fact that he's a left-handed guitarist. Well, that helped. Left-handed musician. Sure, sure, sure. And, you know, it was real easy stuff to play. And when I learned to play the guitar, learning Nirvana was the first thing I learned. But, you know, and it was life-changing for me. And I explained this before, if you remember one of my early Facebook podcasts that I did, or face uh, uh, live videos, I talked about Nirvana's Nevermind to great extent and how it influenced me in my life. But in just the pure musical sense, I mean, Kurt didn't hold a candle to, like, you know, Alice in Chains, you know, uh, uh, Jerry Cantrell, who's like an unbelievable guitar player. Um, and then some of the other guys too. Um, but that being said, uh, oh, Mike McCready. Awesome. Awesome. So good for Pearl Jam. But, um, you know, like MTV made Nirvana MTV made, I, I feel MTV made Madonna as well in the Absolutely. 80s. Um, you know, her music really wasn't that great I, I, to me anyway, but I understand why it was popular because it was edgy. You know, it was very sexual. She was very, very good looking at that time. And, you know, like if it wasn't for video, Madonna would have probably been a one or two hit wonder. You know, the the sexuality that she has in, you know, you can't you can't see sexuality over the radio or on an album. There probably wouldn't be much of probably Michael Jackson, which also would mean there would be no Weird Al probably. Well, MJ was a huge star before MTV. Now, granted, in 83 when Thriller came out. Yeah, he was. But when when Thriller came out, I mean, Thriller came out a year or two after MTV debuted. MTV debuted on August 1st, 1981. It was one of those, like, man, moment, machine. It really was. Exactly. just came together at just the right time for this. A culmination. Sure. No, that's absolutely 100% correct. And uh, you mentioned Weird Al. He's another one. Weird Al 
and what's funny about Weird Al is uh, I just saw a meme recently, and it was 100% true. He has outlasted most of the people he's parodied. <laughs> It's absolutely true. Well, there's a lot of artists that say they know that they have made it in the musical in- industry whenever Weird Al parodies one of their songs. Kurt Cobain was legendary for saying that. He did an interview for, I believe it was either Rolling Stone or MTV. I, I know what it was. It was for Headbangers Ball, Ricky Rackman. Um, in like 92 or 93, Kurt Cobain came on wearing a, a yellow from- ball gown. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I remember that video. Yeah, that. The, yeah, him but. with his sunglasses sitting next to Chris Novosel. He's wearing this, like, well, was literally like his gorgeous... Give me a corsage. <laughs> right, exactly. That is what he said. <laughs> I remember that. And uh, yeah, I'm Dude, pretty sure it was food? that interview he mentioned, like Ricky Rackman asked, like, how's it feel to be now parodied by Weird Al? And, Is it going to be about food? No, it's <laughs> going to be how nobody can understand the words. That's right. But I think that, that uh, phrase came from Weird Al is behind the music. Yeah, I saw that too. Like, he called Kurt and asked him, like, if he could parody the song. And I think, yeah, that was Kurt's response. What is it going to be about food? Because a lot of his first early hits <laughs> were about be food. Such a fussy young man. Oh, I, I, prom- I'm, I'm, I don't know the words in the early ones. Oh, I'm yeah. going to promise not to, not to try not to sing. Beat it! Eat it. Excuse me. Yeah. Eat it. Grab yourself an egg and beat it. it. Yeah, that's it. I can't do it. I had to sing. The, it's the same album that uh, Smells Like Nirvana is on. Uh, the Weird Al. I, I haven't owned too many Weird Al albums. I mean, I had Bad Hair Day and I had the uh, the Smells Like Nirvana album, whatever it was called. I don't yeah, know the name was, of the album. Yeah, it always smells like uh, Nirvana. That was the name of the song. I don't know if that was the name of the album. Off the Deep End. Off the that's Deep End. It. You're absolutely right. It had the, the classic Nirvana, never mind, uh, you know, naked baby on the front, except it wasn't a naked baby. It was Al, wasn't it? I'm trying to remember. Swimming in the swimming pool, chasing a dollar bill, but I don't think it was a dollar bill on no, Al's copy. I think it was Weird Al himself, actually. Might have been. It might have been. usually is on, on, on the, the covers. cover. He's not on the cover of Alapalooza, which was another one I used to have. Technically, he is. But, no, it was just Silhouette a... what of a Tyrannosaurus Rex yeah. with his head on it. Really? I don't remember it being Al's head. I remember the silhouette. Or maybe it's his, just his face on the Tyrannosaurus... Uh, T-Rex's face. Or, uh, skull. Anyway, I remember off the deep end because it was it was it was a funny album. It had a couple food songs on it too, and the two that I remember was there was a parody of Rico Suave, Taco, Taco Nacho Grande. Grande. Yes, Taco Grande. Grande. The white stuff. That was the other one. <laughs> yeah, the, the right stuff. The yeah. um, the new kids on the block. Yes, they were talking about Oreos. Oh oh oh. A uh, Oreo. What's in the middle? The white stuff. Yes. <laughs> That's terrible. We know that. My uh my bus driver growing up to school. I had the same bus driver for all but about two years in school. Okay. She was really cool and would one rides bus. Another one rides <laughs> bus. Another one another one down. Another one That's funny. Hey. Sit by you, one rides a bus. bus. He played like the kazoo or something on that track. No, that, was really, that was his drummer. There's a performance where he's playing it, and his uh, his drummer, uh, John Bermuda Schwartz, is actually playing, beating on his accordion. Where uh, Al's accordion case, and he has all those. All those I do remember seeing that on uh, probably behind the music. All that, yeah, all on there. <laughs> it's a how. He's wearing a tux. My bus driver used to let me play that tape on the bus. Because I had it on tape. Nice. I had it on cassette. And she was super cool. And she would let us, she would play that tape for us. Like, there was maybe a few weeks in a row we played it every single day. And all my friends got into it and thought it was great. And uh, then I think Alapalooza might have been the next album to come out. And that, that featured, I don't remember too much about it. I had it. Bedrock Anthem. Yes, the, the Fred and Barney. Uh, and then it had uh, the one that was about Jurassic Park. Wait, 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 I'm sorry. The Bedrock Anthem, that was based off of the Red Hot Chili Pepper song, right? Was that give the one that was, yeah, give it away. That's right. And, that's uh, right. Under the Bridge. Ding, 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 ding. I don't remember Under the Bridge being parodied. Oh, no, it was just the intro. Did that. <clears throat> oh, and then it and went into the red. Uh, yeah, you're probably right. I haven't heard that song in many years, but I do remember that. I also remember it, that particular album had the, uh, it had a really good, he, Weird Al does a polka thing on like every album where he does like a uh, montage of like seven or eight famous songs at the time and, and he polkas in them man i can't remember which polka he did on that album but i do remember bad hair day had the bohemian alternative Rhapsody. polka it is the bohemian rhapsody polka that doesn't sound familiar i mean you're probably right because you're a weird al fan but it's, i don't it's bohemian rhapsody to a polka it's great can't i can't complain about that and then yeah the bad hair day album was a huge hit for him because it had and the huge uh, controversy yes very it, he had the amish paradise on that album 
But he also had, uh, he had the alternative poker, which was really good. Um, and then, uh, oh, what was the other one? He parodied a U2 song. The uh, Love Me, Kill Me, Hate Me, Thrill Me, or whatever the F that song. It was from the Batman uh, Forever soundtrack. Uh, but he does a, uh, he parodied that song on that I album. I just take songs that are off, or take off uh, songs from, that I like of the albums, put them on my, I, or my iPod. And, so I don't listen to, I haven't listened to these songs, or these uh, well, albums gotta, in years. So you, who knows yeah. what kind of gems I'm missing. Oh, no, it's absolutely true. But, you know, like, when I was growing up, like, it's, I, I mentioned this before, I have a quite a large CD collection, and, you know, Every CD I've ever bought, I've sat down and listened to it all the way through. That doesn't mean I listened to it a second time and that I liked every song on every album I ever bought, but there certain ones stick out, and certain albums stick out, and for some reason, the Weird Al albums that I had, I would listen to all... I only had, like, three Weird Al albums, but I would listen to them all the way through, front to back. And, like, I don't remember everything about them, but there were certain songs that weren't, like, big hits that I, you know, I would Gump. remember. Gump. Yes, that was on Bad Hair one. Day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Oh, there was an awesome Christmas song. I think it was the last track. Uh, the Night Santa Went Crazy, I think. The, the Night Santa Went Crazy. The Night Saint Nick Went Insane or something like that. Yeah, that's right. That's a good one. verse you're on. I haven't heard that song in 15 years. I can't believe I remembered that much of it. But yeah, Weird Al was pretty good. And you know... Oh, I, I, I forgot they did that. Buddy Holly by, the Weezer, by Weezer. Did he really? In par- yeah, in that, well, in that... Uh, Which album was that on? No, it's still bad. Off the or uh, bad hair day. Bad hair day. Yeah, I do not remember that one, unless that was part of the alternative polka, because like track I want to say it was like track five on that album was alternative polka, and I remember some of the songs like he did like uh, the Smashing Pumpkins song uh, uh, "Bullet Butterfly Wings." The no, spy it on my rage, and you know, there's a rat in a cage. Like, it wasn't a parody, it was a polka, you know. Yeah. And then a bunch of other tunes, like there might have been like a Soundgarden tune. You know, the I mean, this was mid nineties. Search. Cavity Search is that YouTube song. Yes, that's the one. That was it's, the YouTube uh, song. The original was Hold Hold Me, Throw Me, Kiss Me, Kill Me. That was it. Which was an awesome tune with an awesome music video. It was this animated music video. It was on the Batman Forever soundtrack. We were talking about this earlier, that movie. That was the one oh, with... The uh, version? No, no, no. We were talking about that movie earlier. Uh, Val Kilmer playing Batman and Nicole Kidman is in it when she looked fantastic. And uh, Jim Carrey plays the Riddler. And who he is like awesome as the Riddler, by the way. Oh, yeah. That's right. Nicole Kidman. I was going to say, I thought that was Uma Thurman. Like, oh, wait no, a no, 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 that's Poison Ivy. She was Poison Ivy in the next Batman movie, the one uh, Batman. It was terrible. I saw it in the theater, actually. That was the one with George Clooney played Batman. He had Calling nipples. in Sick was also in... Uh, Calling in Sick, that's right. It's a style par- stylistic parody of grunge. I remember that. Anyway, to kind of get back to what I was taught, what, what brought us into the whole conversation was MTV. Um, you know, in a couple of days from now, MTV Classic is going to be premiering. It's going to take the place of VH1 Classic, uh, Channel 143 oh, on phone. Comcast, Xfinity. Oh, I, I got it. I got to interrupt. Go ahead. Phony, uh, phony calls. Don't go making phony, phony calls. calls. Yeah, I remember that. All right, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, <laughs> so they're bringing back MTV. And it's going to be, from what I've read, it's going to be early 90s MTV. Some of the best, a lot of the really, like, most cutting-edge animated shows, the animated stuff was great, but also a couple of the best reality shows, like the first true reality shows before reality got real crazy, like in the early 2000s with Survivor and all this weird shit, um, Road Rules and Real, real world. world, yeah. Road Rules. Road Rules uh, came after the real world. It's very familiar, but I'm like, I can't think of it. It was, it was, um, well, okay, we'll just. The premise of real world was you took like no, seven or eight road people. Rules. No, 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 no. Listen, just to follow me on this one. Oh, you're talking to the audience or me? To, to everybody. To everybody. It's you and all four people that will listen to this eventually. Um, real world was based around seven or eight people who lived in a house together, had to get a job, had to live with each other. People who, and they always pick people who were very different from each other. <laughs> road rules was very similar, except they put them in an RV and sent them around the country. And it was kind of a scavenger hunt type thing. Like, you know, they would send them to certain places to find to do certain things. And it was it was a trip. I actually preferred it to the real world because it was cool that they traveled around and like things happened. Um, Both of those shows were cutting edge at the time. You know, I mean, there was nothing on TV like it. They were really I thought they were pretty good. They weren't like my favorite shows. Like I didn't watch them religiously, but they weren't bad. And, you know, it would be cool to see them now because, you know, the reason I didn't watch them when I was a kid was I was a kid. Like it just wasn't for me. And uh, but, you know, now I would probably enjoy those shows, especially considering that it was the early 90s, which I consider to be like one of the best times. You know what I mean? That's when I grew up. So a lot of the nostalgia and, and all that. Um but as far as the animation goes, I mean, there's no doubt that Beavis and Butthead, obviously, a very controversial cartoon. It was really funny. 
and it featured a lot of music. I mean, there were a lot of music videos and stuff on that show. Did you watch the original show? Yeah, but I don't remember a whole lot of animated shows from from MTV, with the exception of Beavis and Butthead and Daria. Well, Daria was a spinoff of Beavis and yeah, Butthead, first off. Yeah, she was off. a character. Yeah, she was a character, character, yeah. And Daria, the show Daria was completely different than Beavis and Butthead. Yeah. Like, even the animation was a lot cleaner, and, and it was a much smarter She's show. She's much a spokeswoman from the National Sarcasm Society. Yeah, kind of, yeah. And, like, you know, I have a couple of, uh, of female friends who I went to school with who were huge fans of Daria, and, like, I posted on Facebook the other day about this MTV classic thing, and these these people were just chiming. They're like, oh my god, I can't believe it, I get to watch Daria again. And But I understand it, because, like, that was kind of the thing in the late 90s was like to kind of be like if you weren't like the hot cheerleader chick or whatever you were basically a daria type person and that show spoke to those people you know but yeah you know that was a good one but there were some other really good animated shows too they didn't have quite the lifespan that beavis and butthead and dart you know they didn't last four or five years like those ones did um one of them that i loved was called the head um it was basically about this guy like a regular average joe like early 20s you know standard white dude in like a city who suddenly woke up one day with an alien invading his head and this alien lived inside his head and his head grew to this monstrous size like 15 feet tall or something ridiculous and the alien was pretty much controlling this dude it was really out there but it was really good. Like, it wasn't a com. Well, I mean, it was funny. I guess it was a comedy, but it was real dark humor. And uh, it was it was cool. Like, it was so different than anything else. You never heard of The Head? No. What was the other one? Oh, Eon Flux, I mentioned earlier. Have you heard of that one? No. They made a movie about it with Charlize Theron. Late 90s, I think. Um, of course, Charlize Theron. Very, very good looking. Hi. Yeah, even now, but really, really good looking then. I almost said Monster's Ball, but no. <laughs> that was terrible. Or no. No, no Monster's no, Ball no. had the Halle Berry, uh, Bob, no, I was Billy thinking, Bob Thornton scene. I was thinking of the... I was, Monster. No. Monster, yeah, where no, she played, uh... No, 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 I'm talking about Shirley Theron. Yeah, wasn't that Monster? No, where she, she was like a uh, female serial killer? Yeah. That was terrible. I thought that was... I no, thought there that was another was movie with her and Gary Sinise. Gary Sinise is an incredible actor. You don't see him in much, but every time you see him, he's great. Yes. What movie was that? Because that doesn't ring I a bell. I cannot remember what movie that was. He, uh, they play the bad guys in the movie. Of course, anytime I think of Gary Sinise, I think of Lieutenant Dan. Lieutenant Dan, you ain't got no legs. <laughs> I've seen the same scene. Lieutenant Dan, ice cream. I'm going to stretch out my sea legs. Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> they gave you an idiot, a moron, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Classic. Forrest Gump is such a good movie. I haven't seen it in so long. Really? There's so much of that I already forget. And There's another, that's another one of those movies. I watched it so many times. I've got it pretty much memorized. <laughs> I do. And that's like a three-hour movie. I know it. I, well, I, I should say, I used to know it line for line. I probably still know it 75%. But we were talking about Charlie Theron. We were talking about Eon Flux. That cartoon was really weird. Like, very strange. I mean, feel free to look it up on YouTube. It was cool because, like, the story was so out there, and it was so weird, and, like, the animation was really different. That's all I could say. It was different. But at the same time, like, it was a little too weird to follow. Like, I couldn't follow the show. I mean, I was probably, like, 12 years old at the time, maybe younger. I couldn't follow it, but I still watched it because it was just, it looked cool. You know what I mean? Like, it was colorful in the animation, and it was real kind of spooky. Um, you know, it was a very serious show. It was not a comedy at all. I mean, it was a serious dramatic cartoon it was it was crazy it was futuristic it was all right and then of course music videos from the 90s are the best too like i just i was addicted to mtv man i watched so many music videos i still remember you know certain songs i hear and i immediately think of you know the video for it and it just always puts me always puts me you know in a nostalgic mood when i hear certain songs and whatnot so speaking of music i recently saw a video i think it was from like maybe a week or two ago are you familiar with the band Coldplay? Yeah. Get this. If you haven't God, seen this, everywhere, aren't they? I, yeah, they're a popular band and they're okay. I mean, I don't love them or anything, but they have a couple good tunes. And I do think that Chris Martin, the lead singer and whatnot, he does have a good, pretty good voice. He has a great voice. He's a good musician all around. He's a great songwriter. And like, it's, it's a little too British for me, I guess you could say. Um, but the reason I bring it up is they did a tribute a couple nights ago or a week or two ago. Uh, I don't remember exactly why. It might have been an anniversary Was it or something. Fish tribute? No, I don't care definitely not. <laughs> they were they came out. They do did an encore, okay, and they started playing the song "Earth Angel," the old fifties song. Earth, Earth Angel. Angel, yeah, which was featured Back in to Back to the Future. Yeah, 
halfway through the song, Michael J. Fox comes out onto stage with a guitar. Oh, no way. And plays a solo for Earth Angel. It wasn't very good. If you remember oh, Back to the Future, <laughs> yeah. If you remember in Back to the Future when he was playing the solo to that song, it was the part where he was suddenly starting to disappear and he couldn't hit the notes. Yeah. He kind of played it that way. I don't know if it was intentional. Or it could have been Parkinson's. That's what I thought, too, until they went in and played Johnny B. Good next. Oh, they played. No way. And Michael J. Fox shredded it. <laughs> he played the Chuck Berry riffs. He did the Chuck Berry dance, and you couldn't tell he had the Parkinson's except for his face. No joke. Like, and I don't mean that in a mean way. Hey, this is your cousin. Now the video your I saw. Cousin, Martin, <laughs> Martin Barry. Barry? Marvin. You know that yeah. lyric, huh? the new song you're looking for? Well, listen, listen to this. this. As we extend our hands out like it's a like a cell phone, yeah. Well, they always told me I had a face for you know face for radio. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I have a voice for silence. I don't know, but um, you yeah. Have, so you Mike, have a face for large mouth mouse. <laughs> Michael J. Fox comes out and shreds Johnny B. Good. <laughs> I mean, shreds it. And like the person filming it was like cell phone video. You know, somebody in the front of the crowd and, um, you know, the band had like a giant screen behind them on stage. So you could you could actually see like his facial expressions. His face is all over the place, like with the Parkinson's. I don't mean that in a rude way. Like he was really making some contorted faces. His hands were working, though, because he crushed Johnny B. Good. I will find the video. I will post it on the podcast page. I tell you guys, it's it's pretty good. Um, like I said, he was not good at Earth Angel, but I, I I honestly think it was intentional because of the movie. Yeah. And Coldplay or Coldplay, Chris Martin from Coldplay does mention before you know as he introduces Michael J. Fox, he mentions that uh, Back to the Future is the greatest movie of all time. I think he says <laughs> he's like now from the greatest movie of all time. Like I can't do a British accent, but as we found well, out I'm last sure week, David we did. Pre- about- well, but appreciate that too. Right. Exactly. Huge Back to the Future fan. I love that movie too. They're classic. I like all three of them. A lot of people give the third one crap. I love the third one. I love the third one. The Old and West. just because Michael J. Fox nearly died. Well, he nearly dies in all the movies. Oh, no. Like, literally, he literally, literally, almost literally died. Yeah, I mean, they hung him. Yeah. And then, you know, the doc with his uh, his Winchester with the uh, the big old scope on it shoots it down. He could. What, what was the line? He's like, I could shoot something off him for 100 yards. I can't remember the line. How much money are you talking about? Yeah, he shoots down the rope that was hanging. Uh, uh, Michael J. Fox or Marty McFly, I should say. I can't remember. I'm sure people are going to be frantically, frantically typing comments. Jeff, he said this or whatever. <laughs> of course, I have a computer. We have like four cell phones and a tablet all sitting in front of us, and we don't, we don't want to look it up. We're, we're too lazy. I at least looked up, you know, you know, Bad Hair Day by Weird Al. No, that's cool. You can be the looker upper guy looking at stuff. That's yeah, cool because I have to like I have to yeah, like manage the me, yeah. mixer and the computer. Yeah, and he shit. doesn't even let me touch that stuff. My mic could be completely off. You could touch it all you want, but it's not going to sound good. Get your filthy hands off of my computer. You. My hands are only greasy. <laughs> I'm this not touching you. I'm arm. not touching you. I'm not touching you. Anyway, <laughs> this is why I do the audio and not the actual uh, podcast itself. Okay. But the podcast is audio, so technically you are, I guess? No, oh, yeah, but you don't actually get to see me. But that would be kind of weird because you'd have two fat guys sitting on one side of the bench. <laughs> Unless maybe you were to put like a real big bathroom mirror behind you. <laughs> Nick, you know, you have a lot of interesting stuff to say, and you're usually pretty funny. Why don't you do some Facebook Live? I have my room. That's it. That's good enough. I mean, I have a, a room that I do. Yeah, I sit- my, yeah my computer is like up here. Well, so you don't I use your have- computer. Use your phone. You can't do it from a computer right now. They don't set it up. You have to do it from a phone or a tablet. I don't know. No. You should do it, man. It'd be fun. Technology crap. No, nah, it's easy. I mean, literally, like you, you type statuses into Facebook all the time. Whenever you go to hit the status button, like the little cert- little bar where you type in a status, a thing pops up underneath it with a couple of buttons. One of them's like you know, photo, video. One's to tag people. One's for location. And yeah. one of them is to go live. Is that the one? It's a little microphone. Uh, yeah, microphone? it looks like a little microphone with like little circles around it. Like yeah, not parentheses, but like uh, it makes it look like uh, parentheses, like broadcasting or whatever you want to yeah. call it. Sure, uh, but you click on that. It uh, you know, it gives you the option. At first, it pops up the camera and shows you what you're looking at which it defaults to the front facing camera but you can switch it to the rear facing camera as well so that you could like you know watch let's say something's going on like your kids ball game or whatever and you want to film it live or whatever yeah, you no, can do all it. i need is kids well you know just you in general the general the royal we <laughs> as the big lebowski would say or the little bowski the, royal the dude yeah uh, you've seen the big lebowski right yeah it's been number of years that's another one of those movies man that i just it's tops it's so good and it's one of those just you got to meme it it is it's a very memeable movie not the only one around here 
With an immune system and a work ethic around here? <laughs> Has the whole world gone crazy? That movie, in my opinion, is like, the lines are so good that it's, it, it is memeable, but at the same time, I feel a little insulted that it gets memed because like the original lines from the movies are just so good and funny. You know what I mean? Especially the John Goodman stuff. John Goodman nails it in that movie. I mean, he's good in everything he's in, know, but he, he is. is excellent in The Big Lebowski. I think the first thing I ever saw John Goodman in was Babe. Or no. There's one who was the story of Babe Ruth. Oh, yeah, he played Babe Ruth, yeah. I don't remember if it was called Babe. It might have been called The Babe. Maybe. Because there also was Babe the Pig. Yes, which came out much later. That came out in, like, 96. And it was not about baseball. It was actually a good movie, though. Yes. I loved Babe the Pig. I thought the first one was good. The sequel wasn't very good. Babe in the City or Pig in the City or something. I'm sure Babe Ruth ate a lot of pig, but, you know. Hey, I don't blame him. Pigs are delicious. (laughs) Pigs are the reason I'm not a vegan. Friends forever. (laughs) (laughs) Pig and a cow, and then there is a big, big cheeseburger. I've seen the Babe Ruth movie with John Goodman, and obviously he plays the part well, like he looks like Babe Ruth, and he's a big, large gentleman. I can't think of when that came out. I'm not sure if it came Early out before 90s. or after. It had to have been after Roseanne started then, because Roseanne started in like '88, '89, oh, yeah. somewhere in there. And Roseanne is a top-notch TV show, at least the first five or six seasons. It kind of went, it kind of jumped the shark. But when the kids were still young in that show, that was a great TV show. And John Goodman nailed it on that show as well. He played that part perfectly, like the slob, hardworking dad. You know, he was it. He was good. And once again, like I said, John Goodman's good in everything I've ever seen him in. Like, I've, I take that back. Blues Brothers 2000 was terrible. But, like, I like everything else he's in. <laughs> and the only reason I thought that movie was terrible was because the the original was just so good. Blues Brothers, you, you, you're familiar with that, right? Yeah, I... I think I thought it was kind of overrated. I love that, movie. but there are some I love all. I did love all the cam, uh, celebrity cameos and tons of them. And the car chases were I'm, excellent. There were a couple really hardcore car I think chases. It's considered like the number one car chase. It should be the one through the mall. As I said, like the uh, I think the one through the uh, the French Connection with Gene Hackman was. Like, That's another classic one. movie I haven't seen. By the I'm way, like, well, I saw I have the French Connection, and he's. I wouldn't even constitute it as a car chase. He's chasing a subway train. Is he in a car? He's in the car. So technically the car is chasing, but there's no car being chased. Yes. Maybe a subway car. That's, that's true. That's why it falls in the category. Yeah, of I guess that's chase. it's like a uh, it's like an asterisk. <laughs> yeah. You're right though about the car chase in Blues Brothers. Like it is so good. I think actually I think the uh, uh car chase in Blues Brothers Brothers involve the most cars. Or involved most cars being crashed. Oh, dude, yeah. At the end, when all those police cars, like <laughs> it was ridiculous. But it was awesome at the same time. I love it how they put. Uh, they got. I think the best part of that sticks out in my mind is whenever Ray Charles puts up a poster for the show. It's upside down. But then, like a minute later, he's like talking to the Blues Brothers, and all of a sudden, he pulls out a gun yeah, and fires it across the store. He can't see anything, and there's a kid trying to shoplift a guitar off the wall. He just he shoots at him. The kid runs away, and then he yells like "Get out of here!" or something. Like, I can't remember. But who all was in that movie? You had Carrie, everybody. You had Carrie fucking Fish, everybody. Carrie Fisher. Yeah, Reed she had Franklin, a minor part. Ray Charles, James Brown, Cab Calloway. Yeah, oh, the old my man. God. Minnie the Moocher. He was so good. I in that. love that song. It's so good, Minnie the Moocher. It yeah, really at is. the end. Yeah, oh, it's excellent, and he nails it. There's just something about his voice that is just phenomenal. And he was he was like 80 years old. Because he was, he wasn't that old. Dude, the '30s he was, was when he was yeah, he popular. Was, the '30s. This yeah. movie came out in 1981. Yeah. No, 1980. So yeah, I mean, it was probably 45 to 50 years after he hit his stride. There's only, really, there's only one other song I heard of his. It was a collection of uh, like swing band and stuff like that. And it was the lady with the veil and just excellent vocals. I mean, his voice just sounds great. I was listening to something recently. I can't remember. It was a podcast. It might have been Stuff You Should Know, and they mentioned Cab Calloway. And uh, they mentioned a couple of his songs that he did in the 30s that eventually went on to become big hits by rock bands. I honestly can't remember any of them, though. Oh, like, why you bring it up? I don't know, but like, it was just, he was an influential guy. Like, you know, at a time when a black guy really wasn't considered, um, you know, obviously the 30s was a very racially motivated, or racially bad time i don't know how to say it but it was bad in america for for you know anybody that wasn't white at that time and for uh, an entertainer like him who's fantastic um back at that time to eventually become kind of a legend it, it's it's impressive you know i mean you don't you can't really name too many um african americans from the 30s and 40s who went on to become like legends in you know through other people or that robert many, johnson's the only one that comes to that, mind ro- you know or that many Famous uh, black musicians or whatever from that era. Usually it's not until we get to like 50s, 60s, and 70s. Like, 
Duke Wellington, Louis Armstrong, you know. John Coltrane. Yeah, I mean, you know, just whenever uh, you get to that time. Oh, Louis Armstrong is excellent too, man. I I love his stuff, man. He's so good, and he was obviously an unbelievable trumpet player, but just that voice, that super raspy that Louis Armstrong tone, excellent. I see skies of blue, clouds of white. <laughs> That kind of hurt my throat to try to do that. It's like gurgling salt. That's what it feels like in my throat right now. It was uh, anyway, but yeah, uh, like gurgling gravel. Kind of get back to the Blues Brothers was such a good movie, and what like you said, the, the cameos are unbelievable. Like Frank Oz was in that movie for a short time. He's the guy that plays Yoda. Did all the the voices for all kinds of stuff throughout the seventies. Was not. <laughs> he had a small bit part. Um, and you know, there's other people. <laughs> That's a joke. That's a small joke. <laughs> nice, nice. Sorry. When 900 you are. Um, oh, John Candy, of course. Crap, I can't remember how that meme goes. Yeah, but it's too big. So that she did. <laughs> I don't think I saw that one. <laughs> it's from Star Wars. Of course, obviously. I'm sorry. That's another Don't apologize. Joke. Don't apologize. It's all good. Okay, fuck you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's your audience. Why should I be at? <laughs> hey, y'all. Over, over on your wall, Jeff, I see you got a, uh, a Telecaster. I do. How come you would never... The strings aren't tightened on there. Tuned at all. <laughs> is there any reason why you don't have a Titan? The tuned? I have a Fender Telecaster. It is definitely the nicest guitar that I own. And it is nice. Everyone it's beautiful. Everyone like the same left-handed guitars, pretty much. At this point, yeah, for those that don't know, I am left-handed, as is Nick's left-handed for the most part. Yes. Um, we are left-handed guitar players. Yeah, um, the overwhelming minority. The overwhelming minority. Nice. Um, yeah, I do have a couple decent guitars, um, but my, my Telecaster is definitely my nicest and definitely my most expensive guitar. Um, it is a uh, 1978 or 79, I can't remember, um, a, a reissue. It wasn't from 78 or 79. I bought it like in 2005, I think. I think I bought it before I met my wife. Um, but I played it maybe ten times. Yeah, right. <laughs> Notice I've not bought a guitar since. Um, that's not true. My Yamaha acoustic that's on the wall next to the Fender is uh, something I bought about four years ago, I think. Which is tuned. Which is tuned. It's a Yamaha FS335, I believe. It's left-handed um, acoustic dreadnought guitar. Um, I bought it out at the uh, flea market at Rogers, Ohio. The Rogers sale, I bought it for $80. It's a Yamaha, so it's a good brand. It's yeah, solid. Buy, yeah, if you were to buy that online, it'd probably be one hundred and eighty dollars. But brand new, the left-handed model is probably two hundred and eighty. No kidding. And this, they only made that particular model from. I, I looked it up one time, um, late seventies, early eighties. It was like a seven or eight year span they made that model. So that guitar is definitely thirty years old or more. Wow. Yeah, and it's in perfect shape. There's a couple dings on the back of it that I put in it since I've had it. Cause, yeah, I sometimes I get a little careless, but uh, it is a nice guitar. I keep it in nice shape, and it sounds beautiful. Maybe sometime soon I'll record some playing through it so you guys can hear it. It's a really nice guitar, real bright tone, very nice. Um, yeah, Jeff likes to play with himself. I do, I do, especially with my left hand. On air. <laughs> On air. <laughs> you guys can't see anything right now. Anyway, we get back to the Telecaster. Yeah, Nick mentioned that the strings are real loose. See, I had that guitar. I bought it through uh, Musician's Friend magazine. Um, Those are the days. Yeah. They, it's still it's still around, by the way. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it is. Yeah. Uh, well, the website is. I don't know if the catalog still is. I was a, I subscribed to that catalog for years. I mean, I, I would just get it just so I can look at stuff. That's. I mean, I might have bought three items ever from Musician's Friend. One of them was that guitar. I, I bought a couple of effects pedals. No, I didn't buy anything like that. I think I bought a couple of, like, cables and sets of strings, because yeah. they would do deals where you could get, like, ten sets of guitar strings for, yeah, like, eight dollars or something ridiculous, so I'd do it. They would do these bulk pat, you know, bulk things. Because, you know, for eight bucks, you can only buy one or two sets, you know, like, at a local guitar center or something, yeah. you know? Yeah, the Fender, I, uh, keep in mind, this is the biggest name brand that I own. I own a Fender. When I first got it, I'd never played a Telecaster before, but I wanted to get it because it was a good deal on it. I think I paid about 700 for it. Uh, obviously, it was left-handed, which is, you know, there's there's a, there's definitely, you know, uh, a premium price you pay for lefty. And to get it at that price, I thought, well, hey, it would be cool to have a genuine Fender guitar. Um, Telecaster's a legendary guitar, more of a country-style guitar. Or, if anybody has Fender. Yeah, it's, sure. It's you know, miss with most no, Strat. Yeah, well, yeah, everybody thinks Strat, and, you know, Strats are great guitars, don't get me wrong, um, and I would probably prefer a Strat, to be honest with you, because and once I got this Telecaster, it. right, it does, it's That's a classic it, look. It's like what a, the Stratocaster, a peel, body shape, peels more to me than a Telecaster. <sighs> to me, too. Um, but you know, and th what's really effed up, dude, is Stratocasters are cheap. Like I could buy a Fender Stratocaster left-handed for less than five hundred dollars. I saw one today. I went yeah. to Guitar Center today, and there was one there, and like I probably could have bought it. 
I, obviously, I wasn't going to. So I kill him. The wife would murder me. Um, but that being said, anyway, the Telecaster, like I, I played it maybe ten times total. When I first got it. I didn't like the sound. I, I bought it and I put these like super heavy strings on it, like fucking thirteen gauge or something like that. Whoa. And uh, thought, you know, if I'm gonna go, like, I wanted like a really fat tone, and uh, so I put these heavy strings on it, and I started playing it, and boy, did I have fat tone. I could only play rhythm. If you tried to play lead on that thing, it didn't yeah. sound good. You'd probably break your fingers. Less right. Steve Ray Vaughn fingers. Well, not really that. Or yeah, Yngwie Malmsteen fingers. Um, but it wasn't that. Like, uh, no, I mean, I had not dexterity, not the sausage fingers. Oh, I was going with Malmsteen because his fingers are so strong that oh, he actually what I mean had by to. Stevie Ray Vaughan, too. Yeah, he had to scowl about the the frets. Malmsteen, that's a pretty famous thing. I love Stevie Ray Vaughan, by the way. I love Yngwie Malmsteen. Like, I'm not into his music, like, think, per se, but he's so loves good. Scallops. He's, <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't, though? Scallops are delicious, especially in a salad. I love scallops. Ugh. No? Oh, you're the minority, man. Well, that's because it's, no matter what you do with them, they still look the same. It doesn't matter how they look, it's how they taste, motherfucker. And still, they still look nasty. Yeah, so what? No, it still looks terrible. Yeah, whatever. When I cook something, it's like it still looks the same. What'd you do to it? I cooked it. How do you know? <laughs> they are like the exact same color and everything. Of course, if you cook scallops, sometimes they get that little tiny browning on them, like a little bit of brown just yeah, to show the that outside. they were seared. Yeah. They're delicious. They're so tasty. In a salad or in some noodles or something. Oh, man, I can crush them. Let's skip, this. skip the scallops. Go with scallions. Scallions are good, too. So you don't like seafood at all? Like any type of seafood? Oh, yeah. You... I like, I oh, like okay. seafood. But scallions are just... Scallops, little... you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Not do scallions. As, do as I do, not as I say. <laughs> do as I... Um, should have done. Done. <laughs> and at. <laughs> well, anyway, you go back to your Telecaster. Uh, long story short, even though we've been talking about the Telecaster off and on for like 15 minutes, um, basically after about the 8th or 10th time I started playing it, it started having shorts. Like, it shorted out the, the pickups on it. I actually priced uh, actual Fender Telecaster passive pickups to replace. It was like 300 bucks. Ew. Yeah, I know, man. That was half the price, almost half the price I paid for the whole guitar. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, no. that price, how about I just... Get a new neck and all that right. and repaint it. Well, I did. No, I don't want to do all that because it's oh, no, a beautiful no, guitar. No, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, so, like, you know, well I started I started checking out, like, uh, like EMG pickups, like, .com. They have the powered pickups you can buy. And, like, what's cool about EMG, I don't know, if you ever check out their website? No, I never bother with any kind of aftermarket accessories for my guitars. Just replacements. <laughs> okay. Like, what's like cool? I have a pair of uh, Ken Armstrong, uh, well, I think they're bridge pickups in my uh, Epiphone SG. That's because my... The stock pickups shorted out or uh, went bad on them. That's the only other thing I did, other than... The SG has humbuckers, right? The two pickups. It looks yeah. like two pickups yes. put together. Like like my, my Les Paul over there. Yeah. Those are humbuckers. Um, yeah. Would, Whereas yes. the Telecaster has what's called a single coil. It's a single yeah, pickup. Right. Yeah, I mean, it has two pickups on it, but they're separate. It's not two put together. I have been much into electric guitar in a number of years. I've switched more over to acoustic whenever I do play. So my Acoustic's so much easier to play, though. Like, like I, don't, I exclusively play my acoustic. I haven't touched an electric guitar in... I take it back. I've played my electric guitar maybe three times in the last year, and the only time I play it is when I go to a friend's house to play. Yeah. I don't... I don't and you got some place where you actually have room to play. Yeah, I just don't play at home. Or to play loud. That's another thing. Like, if I'm playing the electric, dude, I have to crank it up. I, I can't I can't do, like, the little practice amp thing. I can't do it. <laughs> Even with headphones on. Like, I want to crank it up. I want to... Just crank up a distortion and just sit around and play loud ass music. And it's and fun whenever you got a couple of you know, effects. Especially fun, going. yeah. Distortion, some you know. Get a get my whammy pedal a going. Bit of delay. Absolutely. Um, and plus, I have a I have a huge amp. I have a hundred and twenty five watt amp. Really? Yeah, it's upstairs. I'll show it to you. Yeah, it's a yeah, crate. I'm sorry, one one twenty amp. Uh, it's a crate. 100 fx 120 that's the model hmm. and uh it's a it's a it's a nice amplifier it's not like a head and, and cab you know what i mean it's a fully enclosed amp but it has a nice effect setup in it with an effects loop built in i remember dave's uh dave's mom used to have a landy amp oh man that was a nice amp i remember that amp he also had a nice guitar oh, that flying v that he had of hers you remember that i think it was white or cream colored no it was red was it red? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. It was red. And she also had a Gibson SG. That does not that ring a bell. Black. I've only saw it once. And he took it to, he took the Flying V and the SG, or, I don't remember. It was an SG or a Gibson or uh, Les Paul. I think it was Les Paul, actually. And it was stolen at a uh, frat party. You know, that sounds familiar. It sounds like I've heard that before. You probably are the one that told me that before. I don't know. Anyway, 
what do you guys think? Anybody guitar people out there? I know my friend Pat's a big guitar guy. I know I got a couple other guitar friends. If you uh, if you want to talk or share your guitar collection or talk about it, you know I would love to do a podcast with you. I could sit and talk guitars and music all day, every day. Put it in the comments. Tell me what you think. Guitars? What do you got? What do you play? What do you like to play? Do you want to learn to play? If you want to learn to play, I know a guy who can help you out. Patrick Maloney Guitar. Uh, Patrick teaches the world. Check him out on YouTube. He'll teach you how to play. It's excellent. So. And yet, does he still have that? E- does he have that book? That, that he wrote? It? Yeah. Yeah, he wrote a book. Maybe, no, is that available for ebook? Only? Yes, ebook only. Um, I'm not 100% sure where you can get it. I think he has a website called Patrick Teaches the World. I think that's the name of his website, or that might. No, I'm sorry. Patrick Teaches the World is the name of his YouTube channel. I'm sure if you go on his YouTube channel, I'm, he, it's more recent ones. He may or may not have it uh, linked to it in the description. Pat's a pretty good bit has a good business acumen. I'm pretty sure he would put links to his book in his in his videos cuz his video his, he's got over 1500 subscribers, I believe. Hmm. Uh, and it's impressive. His his business is really growing and uh you know, I want to do everything I can to promote it cuz he's my friend. He's an unbelievable guitar player and uh you know, he does a good job of teaching. He gets, you know, he does well. He, there's, you know, he has a lot of people uh that he deals with, that, you know, that a lot of uh clients, I guess you could say. Oh, even your, si- uh, your sister was uh yeah, my sister was was learning for a little while. Yeah, yeah. She she and Pat started hanging out, and she uh, went out and bought this big, expensive Luna guitar, and then quit playing the guitar. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you become a mother. <laughs> well, she was a mom way before she started oh, yeah, playing no, the guitar. Yeah. No, I'm not criticizing her. I'm just saying, like you know, it just it kills me to spend that kind of money on a guitar and then not play it at all. Then again, I have a seven hundred dollar Telecaster sitting on my wall, but it broke, so that's a decent and excuse. And you used it. I have used it, yeah. I just didn't like it. Yeah, it's not like the uh, my Epiphone Les Paul, which I got for, I forget what, I got that sometime in high school for Christmas. I'm going to say, for the sake of argument, I'm just going to say it was my junior year. So like $589 guitar and a $79 hard case, custom fitted hard case for it. And uh, Was it brand new when you bought it? It was brand spanking okay. new. I bought, my parents got it from uh, Musician's Friends, I believe. And... Uh, we got it for free. Yeah, that's pretty good. We never got billed for it. Really? Never got billed for it. Man, jackpot. Ding. And so pretty much that's how my parents can never get on my case. And he's like, yeah, you got too many guitars. Which at the time, I really didn't because I think I had... Uh, you can't have too many guitars, by the way. No, just like that meme with uh, <laughs> Ray Liotta from Goodfellas. And everybody's laughing. Yeah. Um... My Les Paul. Now I have the most base model. It's the uh, the Epiphone Les Paul 100, I believe it's called. It's a it's a good looking guitar. Yeah. I mean, it's I a red sunburst. That's, yeah, that's the one I got. That's the one I have. I paid 125 dollars for that with the hard case. Used at Guitar Center. Yeah, it well, was mine, used, but was it's new, in nice shape. I, mine was probably an older or a newer model. And I don't remember. Like I said, I don't recall how old it is, but my toggle sw- uh, switch isn't broken. My toggle switch. It, it, it's missing the little white cap on the switch, but the switch works. There's supposed to be a little cap on the end of it, but it's Ooh. gone. Yeah, if you look at it, it's no, like... No, but I remember uh, on my SG, I had my, uh, I had a plug, I was, I was playing, I set it, not set it down, but I had it leaning up against the wall or whatever, and I think I went to take a step back, and set it right on the cord. Oh, man. And... Right over. That sucks oh, no, it, so bad. No, but it, it cracked... Uh, the input jack and all that. I'm like, no! oh, all I the got lid you. around it. I'm like, ah, oh. that really sucks. But that's the only other work I've had. That was the uh, SG was the one I had that Ken Armstrong pickup put in. But I have, even though you told me earlier you don't like aftermarket guitar parts. No, that's the only. I, <laughs> I know. I'm just joking questions. around. Yeah. <laughs> I want to put a Floyd Rhodes bridge on one of my guitars. I don't care which guitar. Obviously not the Yamaha acoustic. Um, I don't think my Les Paul can... <laughs> when, yeah, when you bar an acoustic. You, we, I probably great. could install a uh, a Floyd Rose bridge on the Les Paul. No, wait. No, you can't because the Les Paul doesn't have the through-the-body string design. Doesn't the doesn't the Floyd Rose require the guitar to have the through-the-body... You I know what no I mean idea. when I say that, oh, right? Yeah. Through-the-body. Like a, like a Strat. Like a Strat has like through-the-body. Or Jackson. Most Jacksons. A lot of Ibanez guitars. Um, chucking it, chucking his, uh, his... His old Ibanez? No, it's Jack. Oh, I'm talking about... Well, that's right. He had the Jackson, too. That's right. He had the Ibanez first, the and then he got the Jackson. Jackson. It's a nice guitar. I like that guitar. I, I, was, you know, I wasn't with cool, him when he got it, it, but I was. I hung out with him right after he got it. Can't sit down and play. Com- it doesn't look like you can play comfortably, like a flying V. Oh yeah, like it doesn't I mean, sit on your lap. Yeah, it's like flying V. You pretty much have to 
wrap it around your leg almost. I'm fat, so no guitar sits well on my leg if it's not an acoustic guitar. Like, or a dreadnought, I should say. Like, the skinny acoustics don't fit well on me. I need a big, fat dreadnought guitar to sit on my leg if I'm going to play on my leg. If I'm playing electric guitar, I have to have a strap and I have to stand. That's the only way it'll work. Anyway, I'd say it's about time to wrap this up. We've been doing this for about an hour now. Um, we had some pretty nice discussions about guitars and whoa, MTV, Mystery Science Theater, riff tracks. To come back to the riff tracks thing real quick, guys. Um, I highly recommend you guys checking out the website, rifftracks.com. Just about any blockbuster movie from the last 30, 35 years, they riff on it. It is so funny, and it's cheap. They only charge you a couple bucks each. It's excellent, man. Yeah, how many tra tracks on you know, Napster was that? Or iTunes? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Not even two? Not even two. What iTunes, what, 99 cents? A dollar forty nine for the, the good ones? Is that what last it is? I saw it was a dollar twenty nine. That was a while ago, really? so it might have upped the price. I don't know. I haven't been on iTunes in years. I got away from Apple products. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, the Rift Tracks is really good, guys. Check it out. MST3K is coming out on Netflix, I guess, at some point. I don't know when they just announced it recently when it does i'll be all over it'll be awesome um anything else you want to talk about you got anything else no nah, i don't i'll take I'll, that as a no oh not for two and a half minutes <laughs> it up. we'll save it for next time i'm sure you'll be back on the next episode we might try to do 10 bare ass facts on streaking that sounds excellent that sounds good why don't you post the link to that on uh on the experience page or experiment i can try jeff that experiment. anyway yes i am jeff finch this is Nick Lewis. He's my good friend and my co-host today. Um, you know, this is the Jeff Finch Experiment. Please check me out. Facebook.com uh, slash Jeff Finch Experiment. It's my Facebook group. Also, uh, look me up on YouTube. The same name, Jeff Finch Experiment. It's it's the YouTube channel is just starting to take off. I'm just starting to put it together. It's a little crude right now, but it will get better, I promise. And for um, God's sake, somebody else volunteers, so I don't have to do it every day. I know, right? No, I enjoy having you over, Nick. We always have a good time. I enjoy myself. Thank you. You do enjoy myself. Yes, fish reference. I knew I could sneak one in there before the end. Anyway, everybody, have a good one. Thanks for listening. Check out all the stuff. Uh, also, check out Nick's Facebook page and his YouTube channel. I With forget the name. One video on it. Don't e worry about it. Or yeah, I watched it recently. Instead actually. of that, just don't watch it, but check out Patrick Maloney. Yeah, Patrick check out Pat. Te Patrick teaches the world. Absolutely. As we were discussing before, he's his... It's fantastic. Check it out. Do me a favor. Also, uh, another friend of mine, uh, Matt, has a podcast. I plugged it on my very first podcast. It was Pixel Perfect Podcast. He changed the name. It is now called Elite FM. Uh, elite as in Elite Speak, number numeral 1337FM. 1337FM, Elite FM. Uh, nerd. It's a nerdy type thing. It's uh, movies and books and video games, and it's pretty good. If you're into the stuff that I'm into, which a lot of you are, because you're listening, you will enjoy his podcast. Hey guys, have a great one. Thank you so much for listening. This is always fun. Take care. Bye-bye then. Good night.